sharing today um, some talks about boundaries and um, also having a conversation with somebody who I've mentioned a few times in just recent videos. His name was Sprouty. He was in my life for a while. And then also the wisdom of the body. So in terms of boundaries, um, feeling like there's a piece of us and someone else or not. Dignity without ears is um, to have a resolve, to have compassion. This is reconciliation versus the shallow approval where it's not sustainable. It's an easy way out. It's like empty reassurance, a dumping ground. And they say there's four C's that do not bridge the real gap, which is condemning, comparing, condoning, or complaining. It's not our business to condemn, condone, compare, or complain. Like the ego, in terms of the fixer, I can't help wanting to be in a role, needing to be used for controlling, but this exhausts our power because we're just wearing a different mask. Uh, you know, and other people's fears and insecurities are not ours. We don't need to waste the energy that gets freed up from releasing our dependencies. And it's also an issue to, like, incubate, to block people. Because while we take the wisdom away from others that lies under courage, independence, self-confidence, resilience, and resolving inner conflict, like, by pushing them away or by holding them too close, a way of supporting others is not disrupting their process of being frustrated, disappointed by us, not meeting their exact needs and wishes the same way that we grow through that and in terms of putting anyone, putting ourselves in someone else, like letting people go through their own, we may not be okay sometimes and someone realizing we're, we're not isn't them attacking us. It could be triggering because if I was always expected to, in the past, hide it when I'm not okay, but sometimes we, we're not emotionally available and we have to chew over things introspectively. We can at times not be ready to let someone into our bubble if we don't have language for it that feels comfortable and we're allowed to not be okay enough to meet or worry about others' needs at moments. We, they have a higher power that we can trust God and protect and provide for them. And we used to have to try to be okay to get our needs met for approval, for allowance. But unconditional love is not loving them based on whether they meet our needs and not only believing I deserve and I'm worthy of love if I meet their needs. It's valuable to others to get to experience their own growth, even if I triggered it because I couldn't do what they wanted, what they were dependent on. So depriving them of my support if I try to take away their precious gifts of chances for deeper resolution and healing is like when I don't want to let someone else feel worry or fear, insecurity, doubt, or unmet needs. And there's humility in attachments. We can't meet all their needs. We're just an instrument of God, like them. Like, not for everything, but for some. For, and, and in open-ended transformation, it means we won't go, um, it won't all go specifically in the way that, you know, we might have thought, but we will get to practice seeing what happens as we try new things. And when I talked with Sprouty, it was about how you know, when there's a vast expanse, it continues to open, the apex, the summit, the peak, like the Grand Canyon. And like, there are some things that we could think about, like when we eat too much dairy, we get mucus. When someone gets old, their virility as a man, their erection, like, I don't mean just <laughs> like the penis, but I mean like the the rising up kind of, it, it's, it humbles itself, it stops. It's like having a lot of sex, for example, is youth. And nothing is with no strings attached. And a lot, all of us did things when we were going through things. And it's like after we go through the water, we could talk about the what was in the what was in the sea, like the sharks, the snakes, the drowning, the piranhas, the crocodiles. Head up the hill, can't believe I made it. It's okay that sometimes I'm afraid I'm winding up in another ocean. Um, even the sea roaches, they have self doubt may slow us down for the better to to not rush and to you know get a good footing, because where we've been doesn't define us. We you know. For example, I was thinking in my life, technically I felt like I was a prostitute at times. I didn't want to be, but I did kind of sell myself and I was manipulated and I had vulnerabilities and I thought, oh, why not? Like, I'll just do, but look at it. It was like, I was really selling sexuality. I was being someone's object. So when we rush, we may not incorporate these lessons, but I may be so afraid of admitting to myself that I acted like a prostitute that I won't incorporate how terrible it made me feel. I'll just repeat other things like, like running with my eyes closed, you know, but fear of going right back to where we were keeps us moving forward and we can revert it if we want because we don't have to hold the history in a tangible way and it's like f like screw who i was we all learn differently that's we have different experiences nobody knows that version of me why it got there and in other words experience teaches the wisdom and for example when i overeat or try to buy myself a lot of food when i'm feeling sad in the past it was me learning that i didn't have food given with love and prepared for me and sometimes i try to buy it but Someone making food with love for you is different than buying pizza and ice cream or, you know, 
um, going out to the place where they're having like free dinner. So when there's codependency in a relationship with the same man I'm talking about, you know, my issues is like, I couldn't say something positive, could, that he couldn't say something positive. Like you can see in a few, in a few recent videos, I was like idealizing this person. I used it on purpose to talk about codependency, but now I'm seeing in the other context, I started seeing like through the veil later on, the love is like a drug, right? We get attached. So codependency fears that the other being responsible for my happiness or lack of loneliness means that I'm not responsible for my happiness or lack of loneliness. So when this man couldn't say something positive about me or abandoned ship or was very flaky, cloudy when he was drinking or he was inexperienced and unconfident when he was kissing me or he left while I was sleeping, however, because I was the one who said, I think when I wake up, you'll be gone. Um, this is just specific instances. I gave a resentful massage because I felt like he was coming to me for needs that I can easily meet versus like him actually giving to me what, you know, he would like, for example, him not saying straight out, I really need a massage. Could I use you for that? But not in those words. Like, are you able to give me a massage instead of coming to hang out with me when really he had an agenda of a massage? So I repeated a lot of this because I ignored it with somebody more recent in my life. So now, now I want to move into like the wisdom of the body and what I meant to. So I wrote six things down. I meant to have a full, big life, participate in life, align with a higher power, not depend on people, not live in an incubator and be of maximum helpfulness to others. So one, I'm ready to receive flowing steady income. I'm ready to be present and take advantage of all life has to offer me to enrich, fulfill, protect, and secure me. This is in the process of healing codependency. Two, I'm ready to put myself out there even if no one's there to receive my offering at that exact moment. I'm doing that on here. I also, I journal new materials five years after I wrote these things down, six years or whatever, four years. I'm writing new materials, you should know. Some of these things I wrote earlier and then put them in the journals. I didn't have everything contained. Um, I'm typing up a book, so I'm doing it. Three, I'm ready to trust my discernment in choosing which opportunities to say yes or no to. Four, taking accountability for where I feel guilty for things from the past, which is blaming um, the cleaner, the handyman for stealing change from my family members when I actually did that at some point. Um, lied for years to be accepted by my age to people who didn't even like me or care. Um, attacking people on social media for offending me. I took things personally because I was insecure and afraid. Um, I lashed out at them. I didn't want to feel the hurt. Breaking ba leases without regret. There was many leases. There was a spot on Union Street, Nostrand, Shimona, Bay Ridge, Arvad, like so many issues. Um, five, I'm ready to keep my word. This is something I'm still working on. As it's, as we know from the famous book in the Four Agreements, be impeccable with your word. We benefit when we keep our word. It's not that just that we follow through for others. It's we trust ourselves. If we know something small, we should practice saying things we're going to do just to keep our word. And finally, I'm ready to accept the move past disappointment. This is for my own sakes. And all this, again, is for having a full big life, participating in life, aligning with a higher power, not depending on people, not living in an incubator, and being of maximum helpfulness to others. Then the wisdom of the body from Suzanne Scorlock. The wisdom of the heart is the inspirational fire of the soul, and a healthy bone is mobility, even in sturdiness and strength. Living bone is actually juicy, spongy, dense, fluid-packed. In Hebrew, the word etzem is also the innerness. The, the, the essence is also the bone. It's the same word. It's a similar word. Etzem and atzmos. Breathing into the pores, the trees deep inside, like, like uh, is our bones. And the wisdom of the legs and feet is for digestion, activation, meta metabolism, figuring things out. That's why we're like, let's go for a walk. Let me figure it out, you know? Um, wisdom of the pelvis and hips is the root, the engine, the engine, the creativity and power. Cross body um, movement causes brain lateral balancing. That's like um, when oh you can't see I'm like pointing to my other sides of my hips by going like that. Um, and there's a surge when needed and pleasure, joy needs the pelvis on board. So the wisdom of the gut is security and safety uh, registers for, for me in this present moment. Like, and then we have the linear mind, which is of the head. It's over relied on. It's, you know, the body being is like a seductive trap. And we tend to not trust the body, especially in Judaism. We say the Nefesh of Bahamas is like the animal body and the soul kind of resides in the head area. So this is like when we have non-integrated sensations that overwhelm us and there's a drive, a push in the body versus listening to it like a driving and a pushing of the body is like using it like an animal, but like could be abusing it and it doesn't start to trust us and we can't train it very well. It's like the minute that we let go of the reins, it's going to fight. Um, and there's a second guess guessing 
the of the gut knowing or the heart inspiration that's ignored versus when we are like deep in the core of our being we have an inner sanctum of clarity at the center of the navigation system and um the pelvis again being like a sling we could think about um everything up like the torso like the middle and then we can strategize and map what's safe now versus what was safe the gut trust required you know there's like now there's some like integration happening what is peripheral versus the focus comes naturally and what to do now or what are the next steps versus you know versus most of us know what it might feel like to be in hypervigilance which is we're just we're checking on everything we're doing all we have to do like checking in on everyone and everything is there a threat and every little piece we're not really like living in ourselves. We're so busy trying to look outside of ourselves. And we did a meditation together in this workshop I'm talking about, and I learned two things. One, I should do YouTube videos starting with a guided meditation. And I didn't necessarily start with a guided meditation, but I did include guided meditations in the past. And here I am doing it some years later. And also that I'm ready for a uh, uh, flowing steady income. I'm ready to receive so I can have a full life and be of max health um, and participate in it with presence and playfulness. And, um, yeah, I think I'll stop here. I hope that this was meaningful for you and that you're doing well. Thanks. Bye.